Be the Talk, episode 235, featuring Devani Bhatia. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Dewani Bhatia. Dewani, are you ready to talk? Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Dewani Bhatia is a junior at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, studying business and music, go Tar Heels. Passionate about writing, visual arts, and public speaking, Dewani is excited to pursue a career that blends all her interests. Dewani Bhatia, welcome to the talk. Thank you so much for having me, Nathan. Your talk is called The Most Important Word in the English Language, and I love it because you talk about failure as really an open door to all kinds of new possibilities. That word no is so important because we either just completely give up or we learn to explore and come up with all kinds of new solutions that we wouldn't have had. Those solutions come after the no. Dewani, please take us behind your talk. Yeah, absolutely. So um, the most important word in the English language, spoiler alert, uh, it, I believe is no. And the way I came uh, through this journey is that through my application to UNC Chapel Hill, the writing prompt for the essay was actually write a TED talk. So I wrote this talk, a summarized version, and on a whim, I applied to TEDx Raleigh. No kidding. And so th- yeah, this was, was your very- this was your UNC application. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was my UNC application. And then I really, I had no intentions of like ever being able to make it on stage at TEDx Raleigh. I had just applied on a whim and I got the call back for an interview and I thought the interview went terribly. <laughs> so I was for just another, another rejection I was expecting. But fortunately, I was able to speak. And after preparing for two or three months, and that was my first time ever speaking in such a big setting. I gave the talk in March 2016, and it was the best thing I've ever done. It was amazing. I love it because you really just illustrated the power of no. You weren't you weren't given a, a no from anyone else. It was almost like a inside of your head no. But then you thought, why don't I? I already wrote a TED talk for my application uh, for college. Why don't I just blast it out there? Which is a great way to get accepted. There's a course that that I have called Get Accepted. That's one of the first things you have to do is actually apply, not just one place, but but like you were in college or applying for a job or applying to a program somewhere, you've got to send it out there. So the first no to me that you didn't say, the no was almost subliminal in your head. And then you overcame that no, you sent it out there. You said, what what's going to happen? And the funny thing to me, uh, Dewani is that you were selected. And the reason that you were selected is because all the other thousands of students that wanted to get into UNC didn't do the same thing that you did, or else you have, would have had a lot more competition for this. Have you ever yeah. thought about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think about it all the time. And actually, it's a funny story because I was not planning to go to UNC. At the time of my talk, I was actually leaning towards NC State. And I never even thought that I would be able to take that essay, that 500 word essay that I thought would make me look like a desirable candidate, a desirable student for UNC and be able to transform that into something that could be projected to like at this point, thousands of people, which is crazy. And um, I was able to share that with an audience that was super receptive and be able to communicate with other speakers and interact with them and be able to share my story that way. All right. So I'm going to ask you a question that's automatically going to uh, DQ me. It's going to make me look very uncredible as a host, but I'm going to ask you this anyway, because it leads to a bigger question. Ready for this? I'm ready. I I need to ask this. Uh, Are you generation Z? Or are you considered millennial? Because I, I, I'm Generation X. I'm only two above the Z, but I'm, I'm even kind of, uh, hazy on that. So, uh, do you know the difference or can you, can you enlighten yeah. me? What um, do you consider yeah, I, yourself? 
I was born in 1997, so I believe that cons- like I'm considered a millennial. Okay. Um, however, I do feel a little, uh, I, like there, I feel like I'm in the middle. Like my sister, she's Gen Z. Okay. We are like different on many levels. Well, so. the, and the reason I'm asking is not, not so much to make me look, uh, less knowledgeable, but I wanted to clarify that piece. I think, I mean, the criticism that, and first of all, every generation gets criticized, just massively criticized from the previous generation and really hyper criticized from like two or three generations away. And when 20 years ago, when Nirvana was big and I was a high school student or a college student or whatever, you know, we were getting beat up by, you know, the World War II generation, the greatest generation didn't understand this loud music, for example. Now it's the millennials and pretty soon it's going to be Gen Z. And the thing that the millennials often unfairly get, but they get stereotyped and they get stereotyped as being easily discouraged because of the infamous participation trophy. And we all get angry about the participation trophy because we know the real world. You don't get a participation trophy, either win and succeed or you don't. And then and here's my point. That's where your talk comes in. Because when you get a no, when life gives you a no, what do you do about it? Do you cry? Do you, you know, give up? Do you try to collectivize and go on, you know, have a hashtag or, you know, do all of these little, you know, typical stereotypy things? Or do we do what you say to do in the talk? Do we look for other options? I think it's a huge uh, a voice. I think you're a huge voice for your generation. What What are your thoughts about that? What would you say to other millennials, Gen Z people? They come up against failure. They're tempted to take maybe an easier way out to complain, perhaps. And we all are, by the way. But what would you say? I would say to millennials, Gen Z, and anyone. And that was the point when I started this talk was I wanted to make myself relatable to my age group because I was there on stage with professionals that were extremely qualified in their fields. And I was just an 18 year old kid with half the audience questioning me. So I just wanted people, my age, my generation to realize that failure is inevitable, regardless of how old you are. And even though it may seem that it could be this daunting thing to be afraid of that word, no could actually just be a life changer in a way and really kind of motivate you to try something new. Um, which is, I think the way that millennials kind of got to where they are. We innovated and, you know, changed the world slowly and slowly, but now it's just, you know, next thing you know, like there's a, a new technology or something, you know, that's solving a new world problem every day. So that's just a result of probably many notes that had been turned into a yes. Dewani, I have, uh, I'm, I'm a little, senior to you. So I'm going to give you uh, some really encouraging advice as well as any other, you know, millennials, Gen Z, what whatever comes after that. You ready for this? I'm ready. And I think that uh, that other people would really back me up on this. As you go through life with a learning attitude, with a mindset of growth, which is exactly what you're describing here. It's the mindset that says no is just a better Yes, down the, down the road. As you go through life with that kind of a mindset, instead of a give up or complain or whine mindset, you're going to find that no becomes the greatest yes in the future. You're going to find, you know, the, the temporary impasse if you face it with the right mindset, with a growth mindset, it's going to be the best pivot points. And after the crisis or after the difficulty, you'll look back and say, that was the biggest blessing in disguise in my life. Do you have any clue what I might be talking about, Dewani? Yeah, absolutely. And I apply that now in college all the time. I It's so weird. I take my own advice Although I've never watched my TED talk before. I'm too scared to do that. I can't, I can't watch myself on video. Oh, you've got to. I've yet oh, to watch no, you, well, snippets. But you, you can't, you can't do that. You can't come on, be the talk and, and tell and, and come up to this point in the interview and sell us all on the power of no and adversity and having a learning attitude and then tell us I've never watched my own talk before. You got to cross that bridge, Dewani. 
I I will. I mean, Nathan, I'm, I'm going to hold this podcast hostage. Out. I'm not going to release this podcast <laughs> until you tell me what you think of your own uh, your own talk. OK, <laughs> hold your I feet to the fire. It. I just I can't watch myself on video. It's probably the most horrifying thing. And the worst was when I was preparing for it. I'd have to record myself at least two or three times a day. And it was just brutal to listen to. Oh, so. that's so funny. So, yeah. I mean, this this kind of dovetails into the Get Accepted course. The first thing that we have to do, and, and give me 15 seconds, Talk Universe, for this. The first thing we have to do is cross that bridge. Cross the bridge of paralysis. Cross the bridge. And we do that by desensitizing ourselves to the way we sound and the way we look on video. It's what I'm doing right now. I've got... Dewani on video looking at herself right now. Uh, you know, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world. We both look great. And the more you desensitize yourself, the more you listen for content and making things better as opposed to, you know, I've got, I've got a, you know, zit on my nose today or what, whatever the case may be. No, we're listening to content and we're listening for that and we're listening constructively. And that's how we do it. And we do it short enough. And rapidly and repeatedly enough, and we desensitize ourselves, so that's not an issue. So, Dewani, man, uh, good for you for uh, getting accepted without having to quite do all of that stuff. But that's that's my advice that you didn't ask for today for you if you're if you're willing to <laughs> still listen to me, folks. She's still on the line, so it's it's a good thing. Any <laughs> yes. response to that before we pivot over to the blitz round? No, I just wanted to thank you. Any appreci- any advice is highly appreciated. <laughs> well, any advice, Talk Universe, as you already know, is highly almost inappropriate. So you got to be careful. <laughs> the reason that we're talking about this is really pivoting over to you because there are resources that can help you if you haven't given your talk to change the world yet. We've been enjoying this amazing talk with Dewani Bhatia. In a moment, we're going to pivot over to the Blitz Round. People ask, how could I start a a seven-day-a-week podcast? It's because of what I've learned from my mentors. Some of the best mentors in history aren't around anymore. They've left hours of one-on-one mentoring behind in their books. Each month at Classics on Tap, I record a new chapter from a classic business book to help you make a difference. Download your first chapter at ClassicsOnTap.com. And we're back for the Blitz Round with Dewani Bhatti, I'm about to ask Dewani a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of her recent TEDx Raleigh talk. Are you ready, Dewani? I'm ready. Thank you. All right. So you already answered this question. Were you invited to speak or did you apply? You repurposed your college application. And you, I mean, you, you're two for O oh on that talk. <laughs> You got into UNC Chapel Hill, which is one of the most um, highly regarded schools, and you got into TEDx Raleigh. I love it. And so uh, the the other irony about this, this is the blitz round, but the the irony is you 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 weren't given any nose on this application. Have you tried to repurpose this application for anything else that that wasn't yet successful? Um not yet, although I can say that I tried to repurpose this talk for uh, other audiences and it, it's a little tough. So, um, I have received some no's in some later. Oh, good. Public speaking <laughs> endeavors. I will good. say that. <laughs> we're all, we're all said yes. She finally got a no. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think there's a lesson there because you repur, I mean, you put your best thinking into these app, your best. So why not repurpose it? Why not tweak it by 10, 20%, repurpose it, save all that time, use your best thinking and make that work. You walk out on stage, Dewani, did you have nerves or were you in the zone or neither or both? Um, I definitely had a panic attack right before going on. It was my first time speaking. Um, the speaker <laughs> your first time was- public speaking. In front of an audience TEDx of 700 talk. people, yes. Ooh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, I had a panic attack. I couldn't breathe. And the speaker before me was phenomenal. So that was much better. But I got on stage and I couldn't see anyone. The lights were really bright. So that helped a lot. Oh, you um, like that? I, I love I it. I that because it wasn't <laughs> intimidating glares. But the audience was super receptive. And I just had to remind myself that 
public speaking is essentially a conversation that the speaker, or in my case, like me, I own. So if I just got back down to that, then I was fine. I was good. Powerful talk universe. Dewani just said it. You walk on that stage, you own that stage. Take, you know, take the time they give you or a little less. And in that time, you own the stage. I love it. And I love that you found the, the glare of the lights actually more comforting than being able to see people. Uh, that's, that's something that, that I talk about, uh, sometimes, sometimes you walk out. I walked out on my stage expecting the glare. Uh, and uh, as a perform, former performing artist, I, I know what it's like. You walk out and you can't see anyone. I walk out on mine and I can see everyone just because of the, the lighting and the ambient light and all of that, that was a little strange. So uh, just the counterpart with that, uh, I would have preferred the the bright lights as well. Um, are you a memorizer, an improviser, or a blender, Dewani? I am definitely a blender. I cannot follow a script to a T, or I prefer not to, I would say that. Um, my speech always had a different tweak every time I did it, but I definitely can stay to an outline. Awesome. This is the cut for time question. What was the most painful part that you had to cut out of your talk? So when I was originally doing this talk, I had to take out a lot of the some other smaller failures. You know, it was in high school. So for me, a big failure was, you know, not getting an A in a class. So we found that my coach, the curator, we found that a little less relatable to the rest of the audience. So it was a little painful to cut out because it was personal to me and my personal goals, mm-hmm. but it was a little less relatable and a little less con- like um, it was less I was less able to connect with the audience that way. So I had to take some of the smaller academic failures out and focus on some of the bigger things that happened during my journey. Powerful. But it was great with regardless. Yeah. And talk universe. That's, that's a really, that's why I asked the question because just what Dewani says, it's got to be for the audience. There are so many personally gratifying, you know, personal moments that we want to share with the audience that, that simply a lot of them aren't going to land. They're, they're, they're just filler and we have to be willing to do what Dewani did and cut that out. Dewani, I could be wrong. Did you have like a ridiculously short talk? Or am I, I, I've reviewed a a whole bunch of talks for this week, but was that your talk that was ridiculously short? (laughs) Um, it was about, I believe, 13 minutes. Okay. That's pretty short. Ridiculously short. That's pretty short. short. So good, good for you. That was, uh, you know, um, I think they give us, uh, different, you know, different organizations, different situations. So a 13 minute talk is a nice length. Uh, for a talk. So good for you uh, on that. You know, what was the most unexpected, strange, or just plain weird thing that happened before or during your talk to Wani? Oh, I have a great story for this. So during my talk, and you'll never see this in the video, so this is an all-time exclusive for you. Um, my slides stopped working in the middle. Oh, and a big fun. error message fun. came on the screen. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, it just came on the screen. My slides stopped working. I saw on the screen below me uh, in my head, I'm like, okay, (laughs) that's great. But I just kept talking because at that point, it wasn't me speaking. It was just the muscle memory of like Mm -hmm. memorizing and like knowing what I was going to say. And I just kept talking and I just trusted that the AV people and the tech people in the back knew when I like what slides corresponded with what parts of my speech and I just acted like it never happened. So I kept going. But yeah, there was a huge error message. And I could see um, in the back some of the other speakers, like that look of horror on their face that, oh, my God, that like her slides have not worked. Dewani, this but is the, I, I got to I got to jump in on you. I'm going to cut you off right here because yeah. this is this is your first time public speaking. And you knew to do that veteran boss move. When the slides don't work, just keep on going. Don't let it fluster you and, and just don't acknowledge the, the tech issue and plow ahead with what you're going to say. That's remarkable. Thank you. Yeah. It was very scary. Um, but that was a moment where I just, I just like, I just kept going. I, I didn't have, I knew that if I stopped, it would just be a lot worse than, you know, a simple tech. How did you know that? 
I huh? mean, it's one thing to be in the audience and, and know that because you're not doing the hard work. You're not in the middle of a panic attack. How did you know that just to plow through? Or or maybe it's like doing the Tony Robbins uh, firewalk. If you stop, you're going to get fried. Was it was it almost that kind of a thinking that, hey, I got I'm going to go through and <laughs> I'm going to do what I came here to do and get off the stage as, as soon as I can after I did what I was going to do? Or Or did you just default to that? I just, I want to think of it as like a fight or flight like response almost that, um, I just, I, I don't know. I, I was just so passionate about what I was speaking that it was easy for me to continue talking. And I knew who was in the back doing AV. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was a remarkable person and I knew she knew exactly what my slides were. So I kind of just put my trust in the whole team and it worked out perfectly. And you, you can't tell in the video. So that's all that matters, I think. And everyone in the audience, no one really cared after that little 30 second glitch. So it all worked out. Love it. We've been enjoying the Blitz round with Dewani Bhatia. Her talk from TEDx Raleigh is called The Most Important Word in the English Language. If you want to check out that talk, go to be the talk.com, our show notes page. We will have a clickable link in there. And better yet, we will have the LinkedIn profile for Dewani so you can actually connect with her. If you're looking for interns, if you're looking for, for people who are still in school right now, who are the best and brightest, you want to check out what Dewani is doing in her space. And we're going to be back with Dewani Bhatia in just a moment for the 10 second final word of advice. Everyone wants to change the world, but not everyone knows the first step. Before you can change the world with your talk, it has to be selected. So grab the templates, timelines, and tools that I use to get my talk selected at BeTheTalk.com. And we're back with the 10-second final word of advice with Dewani Bhatia. All right. So my 10-second final word of advice is that public speaking is just a conversation, and it's not as intimidating as it might be. You own the stage. It's all you. No one else can refute what you're saying at that time. So just keep that in mind when you're owning the stage and preparing and giving your talk. Dewani Bhatia, thank you so much for carving time out of your busy schedule to share your wisdom with Talk Universe today. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be the talk.com. See you tomorrow.